All right, you want to call, call to order? Yeah, so this meeting is being called to order. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, pursuant to Public Laws 1975, Chapter 231. This agenda is complete to the extent known and was sent to the Trenton Times, posted on the first floor bulletin board in the City Hall, and filed in the City Clerk's Office. Formal action will be taken. Roll call, Mr. Garcia. Certainly. Ms. Caldwell Wilson? Present. Mr. Harrison? Mr. Mouchel? Right. Ms. Vaughn? Ms. Wilkins? For the record, Ms. Wilkins did notify me earlier via email. She will not be at this meeting today. Uh, Ms. McBride? Mm, present. Okay, at the present time, I only believe I've got three responses. I'm going to hold out to see if I can get another. Uh, Mr. Harrison, are you with us? Not hearing Mr. Harrison yet. Ms. Vaughn, are you with us? Not hearing from Ms. Vaughn either. Uh, Council President, I'll give it some time and do another roll call. Yes, definitely. Okay. Councilwoman Wilson, do you want to call Councilman Harrison? I'll try to call Councilwoman Vaughn. Yeah, I'll do that. All right, I'll try to call Councilwoman Vaughn. Excuse me. I'm going to put myself on mute. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't able to reach um, Councilwoman Vaughn. Did you have any um, success, Councilwoman? Mr. Harrison said he's on. I just spoke to him. He just got home from work. He said he'll be on in two minutes. Okay. Council President, while uh, while we're waiting for Mr. Mr. Harrison, uh, do you mind if I go through the department heads? Oh no, that'll be that'll be great. Thanks. Certainly, uh, Mr. Cruz. Um, uh, President, good evening. 
Good evening, Mr. Cherry. I'm present. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Liston. Present. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Bridges. Present. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Wilson. Present. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Douglas. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Mr. Doc Mr. Daniels. Present. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Dr. Ames. Present. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Onitari. Good evening, I'm present. Good evening, Ms. Richardson. Mr. Lavenberg. Present. Good evening, sir. Mr. Zelinsky. Present. Good evening, sir. All right. Did you call Mr. Koloji? Ah, Mr. Koloji. I'm sorry. I was going to go through the rest of the Good evening. And thank you. And I'll mark myself as well. Mr. Mr. Harrison with us yet? I'm looking myself, I don't see him. Do we have Ms. Vaughn by any chance? I don't see her. I don't either. Okay. Good evening, Ms. Vaughn. Are you there? I'm here. Good evening. Thank you very much. Yes. And I believe that gives us a quorum, Madam President. Yes, it does. And we can begin. Beautiful. I'm going to switch to the docket here. Hold on one moment. Okay. Moving straight into resolutions, if that's all right with you, Council President. Go right ahead. Department of Administration, Resolution 22-417, resolution authorizing transfer to be made by the Director of Finance of the calendar year 2022 utility appropriations. And that automatically has to be a, a roll call, I believe, because it's um, pertaining to the budget. Okay. Resolution 224-418, resolution authorizing a premium payment to CBiz Board in Perlman, 200 Charles Ewing Boulevard, Suite 330, Ewing, New Jersey, 08628, who will remit payment to Safety National for excess workers' compensation in an amount not to exceed 460,521 from October 10th through, excuse me, from October 10th, 2022 to October 10th, 2023. Does anyone of the council members I want this roll call. If not, then you can add it to the consent agenda. Councilman Harrison. Mm -hmm. So noted, Councilman. Noted. noted. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Council Har Councilman Harrison. I heard consent, correct? Yes. Resolution 22-419, resolution authorizing a premium payment to Safety National. Oh. 1382 uh, Schwetz Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 
63146-3540 for general automobile law enforcement and public officials miscellaneous liability and excess liability coverage in an amount not to exceed $759,097 from October 10th, 2022 to October 2023. I listen, this says consent. Yes. Noted. Resolution 22-299, resolution authorizing an amendment to resolution 2536, awarded to Grassi and Company CPAs for special forensic accounting audit and, excuse me, audit services for the Department of Water and Sewer for a period of one year from October 22nd, 2021 to October 21st, 2022 for an additional 225,000 RFP 2020-40. Yes, this had to be, this had to be amended, uh, Mr. Uh, Garcia, because it should state from uh, November the uh, 3rd until until uh, January the 1st. Mm -hmm. 23. 2022, November of 2022. Got it. No. I'm November. sorry. November. November is 2022. 2022 and January of 2023. Noted. Thank mm -hmm. you. And that can be a roll call. Oh. Okay. Mr. President, wouldn't that be till December 31st? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mm -hmm. Got it. Moving on, uh, Mr. Yes, uh, yes. Because this, Mr. Garcia, uh, this four fifteen um, shouldn't be on here without the map. Was the map of the UEZ funding ever attached? Because I never received it. Uh, there was. It was emailed out to you all. Um, there was a map that I obtained from Mr. Cherry. Uh, give me one second, and I'll try and put that up. Would you please? Certainly. We don't really care about the map. Um, Council President, may I speak? Uh, yes. Yeah, we, what, what, yes. What we're talking about is whether or not this, all right, so is, is this street in the urban zone? He should be able to tell us that. We yeah, shouldn't have to determine that by a map. Why are we determined? That's what Mr. Daniels was supposed to confirm with us. The UE zone, the UEZ zone. Yeah, what streets are in the UEZ zone? Period. Why are we doing the analysis here? Madam President. The maps are not clear. All right. So all I'm saying is, well, I just want to say, I'm sorry, Council President, do I have the floor? Yes, go ahead, Council. Okay, number one, we asked Mr. Daniels to come and give us uh, a listing of, and, and one of our residents asked for the same. There is a defined list of streets could be on our 250 plan or whatever that says which streets in the city of Trenton are within the U the qualified and eligible you know that are in the UEZ zone. That's what we want. Period. And and I and I researched this organization, GMH Associates. It's not even a business. It's a it's a labor union. It's, I mean, it's a labor relations organization. How are they generating jobs and and the UEZ money are is for businesses that are trying to who, 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 trying to remain open in the city, hire residents. The mission of the UEZ um, program is clear, and this is a. Labor, a labor union, a national labor relations board. But anyway, that's more here nor there. 
the question is, are they, are they, do they, do they, are they eligible? Do they, does their business uh, profile fit the requirement of the L, uh, UEZ program? And are they even in the zone? Because it doesn't even look like their business model or even fits the um, the definition of a business that would be eligible for this program. This is some, so this should be roll call. Uh, yes. If, if not even pulled, because again, this is a national labor relations board. <laughs> Why would they be up? I don't think they're eligible for it. And, 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 and now it raises the question that not only I would like Mr. Um, Daniels to give us the list of it. That should be on the city's website anyway. The list of all the streets that make up the UEZ zone and um, the, over, the urban enterprise zone and, and the UEZ program. And which business and which type of businesses are eligible for that program? Maybe the National Labor Relations Board, that is GMHC Associates of America, perhaps there's another program that their business model would be more suitable for, but not the UEZ zone. I mean, uh, monies. And it says the emergency loan, uh, the trend emergency loan in the amount. So. I just don't think this business is eligible and I don't think the UEZ program was designed for this business model or this product of a business, but uh, let's just uh, confirm the, the number one priority is, is whether or not there are that they, that they are even in the zone. Thank you. Council president. Council thank president, you. if I may speak on GMH. Hey, yes, go right ahead. Ma'am, I'm being told that, they're in the plumbing business. They manufacturing plumbing parts and do services. N nothing to do with National Labor Relations Board. No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. And the, the map that was provided was what was asked for because we were trying to ascertain was the business, in fact, in Trenton proper. We have ascertained that it is. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Council um, President. Well, um, show, well show us those documents. Provide those documents, um, Council President, please. If, if, send them to us. Go ahead, Councilman. Uh, that, that was going to be my question. Was it in? Was it located in Ewing or was it located in the, the West Ward? And he uh, he actually addressed that. my question. Thank you very much, Mr. Daniels. Thank you. Um, we can um, roll call this. Mr. Garcia. Noted. Moving on. Resolution 22-422. Uh, I'm sorry. sorry. Council President. Yes, go right ahead. Count. Yeah, um, Council President, you said at the last meeting that you were going to go drive by there. Did you drive by to make sure that it was no. no, I did not, uh, Councilwoman. I had um I was in the office with the um with the clerk uh, that day doing the review and we had the map up and it, it didn't appear to, to be in Trenton for my, but I did not drive by. I did not have the opportunity to do that. Oh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. Madam President. But I, but, 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 but I, but I will make it my business before the vote Thursday. Right. Madam President. So um, we may continue um, Mr. Uh, Garcia to the next resolution. Resolution 22-422, resolution exercising the option to extend the contract for an additional one year awarded to Allied Control Services for instrumentation, calibration, and repair contract from December 2nd, 2022 to December 1st, 2023 in an amount not to exceed $210,900. Is 2021-41. Okay. Roll call. Okay. Resolution 22-423, resolution accepting a bid and awarding contract to George S. Coin Chemical Co. Incorporated for the furnish and delivery of zinc orthophosphate for the city of Trenton. 
Department of Water and Sewer water filtration plant for a period of one year from October 7th, 2022 to October 6th, 2023 in an amount not to exceed $325,281. Bid 2022-53. And this, this is the um, replacing the rejected bid for the chemicals that we um, voted upon the last council meeting, Mr. Cherry. That is correct. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes, this can be a part of the consent agenda. Okay. Uh -huh. and Madam Chair, I have Madam President, I have no other items. Yes, we will go straight to uh, public comment. Certainly. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak? Please raise your hand. I have one here, Mr. Collins. Go right ahead. Yeah. Yes, go right ahead. Oh, actually, my name is Kira. Um, my oh, I'm sorry, I saw Michael Collins sitting here. Yeah, he, he was oh. um, he was logged into my Zoom before, so um, his. Oh, okay. Um, sorry about that. So my question actually doesn't have to do with these resolutions, but well, it, ha it has to be, ma'am. It has to be pertaining to the docket. Okay, can I just get and, Mr. Andre and on, on Thursday? Um, you can ask. Um, any question that you would like, but tonight is just pertaining to the docket. Okay, can I get um, the clerk's email? Yes, Mr. Garcia, would you please give her your email? Uh, certainly. Um, my e uh, yes, my email. You can email the city clerk email address, or you can email mine, which is uh, bgarciatrentonnj.org. Okay, and what's the general one too? Uh, the general one is um, clerk at Trenton uh, tr clerk at trentonnj.org. And you said yours is B Garcia at Trenton. Correct. Correct. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Are there any other members of the public wish to speak? I'm not seeing any hands. Are there any from the phones? I'm hearing none, Council Hi, President. Hello? Hello? How you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is uh, President of the SOA, uh, Jason Woodhead. Yes, sir. How you doing? Uh, I just wanted to bring your attention um, a lawsuit that was filed by us, and we just prevailed yes. in the Excuse me, Mr. Um, Woodhead. This is about pertaining to the docket. Okay. So I don't, you know, we, um, you can send that information to the clerk's office and he will disseminate it to us um, if Mr. Kaloshi doesn't have it. Well, I can send it to you right now, but you should have it, uh, Council President. It's related to. Oh, but uh, I don't have, excuse speak. me, Mr. It's related Mr. to being able to speak during public comment. Okay, but I don't have Violating I don't, the Open Public Meetings Act by not letting people speak. I don't I don't have it, Mr. Well, it uh, Mr. Woodhead and I and I will ask Mr. 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 Woodhead, and Mr. Uh, Bridges. Mr. Woodhead let, the yeah. President I may. Um there was an order that came down. We're evaluating that. Um, I, I forwarded the decision, but we're waiting on the to get the actual order. So once I get that, uh, you'll you'll have the information that Mr. Woodhead's referring to. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bridges. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, you, may continue. you may continue, Mr. Um, Garcia. Uh, certainly. Are there any other members of the public that wish to speak? I'm seeing no hands. I'm hearing none from the phones. Um, moving on to uh, council comments. Yes, we'll start it with um, Councilwoman Caldwell Wilson. None at this time. Councilman Harrison? Not at this time. Councilman Muschel? Not at this time. Councilwoman Vaughn? Yes. Um, I have a... Uh, I, is, is Dr. Lopez on the line? Mr. Mr. Is Garcia? Is Dr. Lopez on the line? Does she answer to the call? Council President, can I speak? Yes, go right ahead. Council she, President, can I speak? Okay, and it's, it's Dr. Ames, um, Councilwoman Vaughn. Hey, 
Uh, good evening. Um, I have a quick question regarding the status of a resident uh, who I believe has some issues with, she's in a crisis. Um, it's been ongoing. She's been having a hard time. She lived in one of the apartment buildings here on Stuyvesant Avenue that's um, subsidized. And, um, and I, I believe she was on the verge of getting e evicted. And, um, and she has engaged uh, an individual by the name of Carrie Ann at one of our nonprofit um, partners and pretty much has been, I mean, I don't know all the details, but uh, the, she's been given the runaround. Uh, I see her walking the streets now. Uh, I, I, I assume that she's been evicted. I, I, I myself uh, drove her directly to the Broad Street office to, to meet with Ruth Carter. Uh, Ms. Carter had given uh, the individual, I don't want to say her name, um, uh, a commitment. I thought that it was going to be in writing and I left her there thinking that she was going to be okay. And she's not okay. I was on Route 1 today. Hey, can you I, send me that? And so, uh, is, it, is it possible you could send that to me in writing? Yeah, once I, I sent it over to the mayor. So I, I followed the process, right? I'm not allowed to call you or write you. I, I sent it right. over to the I didn't mayor. I didn't it yet. Okay, right. one, one second, one second. Well, we don't want to talk about that now. You could talk to your boss about that, the mayor. I sent it over to uh, the mayor and his uh, designee, uh, Corin Green, uh, uh, several weeks back about this individual to try to prevent her from becoming homeless and evicted. And I took her to Ruth Carter and Ruth said that she was on the phone with the landlord and that they were gonna cut the land, she was gonna look for the monies across all the nonprofit partners to try to con conjure up the funding that would be required to at least pay the rent in the rears and to keep the woman in the building. Then I find out today, I go up to Route 1 because I go to FedEx to pick up some, some copies, FedEx office, and I see this woman walking on Route 1. And I'm like, what are you doing all the way here? She says, well, they put me in Motel 6. I said, you were evicted? And I don't, and, and I'm just. So is this I'm appropriate just, to talk about a client information on this like this? I'm just asking. I'm curious. Is this an appropriate conversation? Yeah, yeah it is appropriate. Yes, it is. Like yes. About a particular. About yes, a it is. Yes, it is client. appropriate. Yes, it is appropriate. Yes, it is. I can talk any. Well, I, you I, might get a response from me on that unless I see it in writing, Councilwoman Vaughn. Well, you should have reached out to the mayor's office. So do you so you're saying that the mayor did not share with you the uh the issue? Okay. You never received the issue? I came to your office as well. I came to your office. As well. I'm not gonna comment. And you weren't even in your office. You're never in your office. You are never at work. Because I'm working. Excuse me? You are you're never doing? at Come work on, at City Hall. I'm working. Can we, can we, can we? At a time, please, all. I want okay. to start muting everyone. A woman has, is, 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 I'm in my civic comments. Don't, don't, don't mute, mute me, Mr. Uh, Garcia. So Just I will not, I, I will not talk to Dr. Ames. Uh, again, there is a, a residence of the city that has been evicted. She's on the streets now, homeless. And this is not the only individual that has encountered this type of service from the likes of Dr. Adela Ames. She runs the Department of Health and Human Services. This council has provided funding for homelessness and to prevent homelessness homelessness and to prevent residents from getting evicted. Now I have the trails of emails that I sent to the mayor. Now if Dr. Ames is being truthful here and she did not receive those emails, then I will hold the mayor accountable. And if the mayor refused to send yeah, she put, to, to, to put the, don't interrupt my civic comments. 
I'm the duly elected official here. And if it were not for me and the taxpayers of the city, people like Dr. Ames wouldn't even have a job. And the fact that she's arrogant enough to try to sit here and pretend like she got there. No, you're not going to discourage. No. Who, who is that? Mm -hmm. Council President, who are these people who I, are going to interrupt my civic comments? I don't know who they are, but they need to um, be respectful and allow you to finish. <laughs> now, the mayor, now I have those uh, emails. Either. Dr. Lopez is lying or the mayor has deliberately put a woman's life in danger. And he refused just because a certain councilwoman raised the issue. Rather, the mayor chooses to like Robin Vaughn or not has nothing to do with him providing the services that he took the office to, to, to provide to the citizens of the city. He has full governance of the administration. Dr. Ames is correct. She does not have to answer to me, but she should answer to, she answers to the mayor. And the mayor refused to give, I raised the issue about a welfare of a citizen who is now homeless because the mayor refused to give her services. And I want the citizens of the city to know that. He refused to deploy certain individuals of his administration that runs the Department of Health and Human Services, the necessary services to prevent an individual to get funding that was earmarked to help folks who are in uh, a crisis, who needs emergency shelter to avoid eviction. So now all they have done has, craw has have, have, have caused the biggest cri a bigger crisis. And this is why the FBI needs to finish their investigation on the Department of Health and Human Services. This is why the attitude that you saw by a, a professional, supposedly, Dr. Ames, this is why the FBI needs to come in and finish their job and provide and, and bring down bring down those indictments on the Department of Health and Human Services. Because the money that's supposed to go to this individual, they padded their own pockets with. Dr. Ames signed off on that overtime. And then she's gonna come on the <laughs> call and, then, and and try to think she can get with me. Can't get with me, Councilwoman. Okay, so I'm not done with my, my my time's not up. The, the council president. Okay, so okay. it's because of people like Dr. Ames who comes into the city and fleece the city, pad oh, pad her okay. employees with overtime, and then the people of the city can't get the services because the money that comes into the city to help folks like I'm speaking about. So they're not homelesses, homeless. They steal it. Steal taxpayer dollars. That's what's been going on here. And for that, Dr. Ames should pay the price. And I can't wait until that happens. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Thank you. So um, what's going to I, happen, I, Dr. Ames? I would like to thank everyone for coming on, uh, excuse me, the meeting tonight. And I do have uh, a couple of things that I wanted to speak to, but I just, it was just one important thing that I wanted the public to know is um, that the election is coming up on November the 8th and on, no, and on October the 25th, between the county board of elections, the clerk, and the superintendent of elections decided to move three district polling uh, sites, three districts, district 14, 13, and nine. Those districts go up to Independence Way, 
down Kelsey Avenue, all the way back to Park Parkside and West State Street. Most of the residents in that district, in those three districts, are seniors. What they've done is is voter suppression. You cannot move a polling place almost a mile away when you're dealing with seniors. And that is what has occurred here. 13, 14, and 9 were moved on October the 25th. The people that made the decision to move those polling places does not live in the city of Trenton and does not represent the city of Trenton. The Board of Elections, the superintendent's office, superintendent of elections, and the city clerk. That's the city clerk. That's not my call. And so, therefore, we have over 2,700 voters whom polling place was changed at the 11th hour. This makes no sense, but this is what they do in our community. They suppress the vote. There's no way a senior from Independence Way that do not have transportation can get to Gregory School. There is no way that a senior that lives in the Luther Towers can get to Gregory School. This is, it's unheard of to move a polling place two weeks before the election. And it never had to be moved to Gregory School. It could have been moved to the Jenny Stubberfield Senior Center right next door. But they never intended for these seniors to, for these seniors to be able to cast a vote when they move those that polling their polling sites to Gregory School. And the public needs to know because nowhere else in the state of New Jersey will they pull this type, these type of shenanigans. Nowhere. Nowhere. But they pull them in Trenton and they think it's okay. They think it's okay to do it. And so now we have to be wondering why. Why did they change those polling sites in the 11th hour? Why? Thank you all for coming to this meeting. And um, I hope you all have a good night. And I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Mr. Garcia. I will ask uh, for this meeting to be adjourned. Motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. I'll say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Good night, all. Good night.